Hello. In this video, I'm going to share with you a few applets which illustrate very nicely the Ripper Tank interference pattern. So this one is written by um, ngsir.netfirms.com uh, So we have two uh, dippers here. So we have the circular waves um, propagating outward from these two dippers. This is the zeroth order antinodal line. The first order antinodal lines will be this one and this one. Oops. The second order antinodal line will be this one and this one. Now, uh, if I click on a point here, the app is going to show you uh, how the waves leave the two dippers and arrived at that point. So you can see very clearly that the waves leave the sources in phase. See the two blacks, um, black dots here? They go up and down together in phase. And as the destination, the two waves also arrive in phase. You can see the blue and the purple dots. Yeah, both going up and down in phase. That's why you have a constructive interference here. And it's the same uh, any point along this uh, antinodal line because the path difference is zero. So it's quite obvious that the waves will arrive in phase at any point along this line. Now let's let's pick a point uh, on the n goes to one antinodal line, for example, somewhere here. Okay, you can see that um, again the waves leave the sources in phase. That's the two black dots. Um, even though this wave has to travel a longer distance to arrive at the destination compared to the other one, the two waves still arrive in phase here. The reason is because the path difference is one complete wavelength. So you know that when the path difference is one complete wavelength, um, the two waves will still arrive in phase at the destination. If I click on the point here, what do you think you'll see? This is the second order um, antinodal line. So this is where this one has to travel two wavelengths uh, further to arrive at the destination compared to this one. But because the path difference is two lambda, um, the two waves will still arrive in phase. They go up and down together. So let's pick a point where we can see destructive interference. Um, where would it be? So somewhere here, right? I expect the path difference to be 0 0.5 along this line here. I mean 0 0.5 lambda. Yep. So this one, this length is half a lambda longer than this length. And because of this, um, the two waves, even though they leave the sources in phase, they arrive in antiphase. That's why we have a destructive interference here. And likewise here, when the path difference is one and a half lambda, they will arrive uh, in antiphase. Maybe I should pick a point on the on this side. So look at the black dots. The black dots are in phase. So the waves leave the sources in in phase, but they arrive out of phase. That's because the path difference is um, two and a half lambdas. This is another applet uh, by Waterfund. Uh, this one is pretty good too. What is drawn here uh, is um, the, the black lines represent the crest. And you can see a fainter line. Uh, that one represents the troughs. Right? So this one is a bit different from the one uh, I I have in my lecture notes. So they they both draw they, they drew both the crest and the and the troughs. Uh, anyway, so if you focus on a point, like maybe let, let's let's say this point here, see the pink dots there? So you can see this point, um, you see the two two crests coming. You, you can follow two crests, right? The intersection of two crests, and you can see that the two crests um, go up this along this line. Right, uh, see the two crests intersecting and then go up. And it's not just the two crests intersecting, we'll, uh, we also have two troughs, 
two troughs intersecting and moving up. So at this point, you have both um, crest meeting crest and trough meeting trough. So that's why the amplitude of the oscillation at this point here is, uh, is very large, it's maximum, because you have both the very large positive displacement when crest meets crest, and also the very negative displacement when trough meets trough. So this is a zero of order um, anti-nodal line. And this is the nodal line where the path difference is zero. So you can see, right, crest meets trough. And it, the intersecting point will, will travel along this nodal line. And the amplitude of oscillation along this line is zero because, um, because the waves coming from the two wave sources are always uh, meeting in antiphase here, right? Everything, every point along this line, you have two waves in antiphase. That's why the displacement is permanently zero. All right, that's all. Ta-ta!